Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Drones have made a distinctive mark on the world. Once militaries started to realize what could be accomplished with unmanned aerial vehicles, tactics, strategies, and weapons started to change. Have you ever wondered what goes on in the control station of one of these UAVs? UAVs like the MQ-9B are a marvel of modern military aviation. It's a remotely piloted drone with significant strike capability, developed by General Atomics. The MQ-9B, often known as the Reaper, has a service ceiling of 40,000 feet and an endurance of more than 40 hours. Ground technicians with various tasks from payload specialists to mission intelligence coordinators are required to operate the MQ-9B. Maintenance is vital necessitating rigorous pre- and post-flight tests, including engine maintenance, avionics validation, and weapon system verifications. Furthermore, regular calibrations are required to ensure the dependability of the cutting-edge high-definition sensor suite. Despite its intricacy, the Reaper's logistical footprint is remarkably small, making it a benefit to any operation. Ground control stations are the nerve centers for MQ-9 Reaper operations. It houses pilot and sensor operator stations, and allows for real-time command and control of the aircraft. Air crews of remotely piloted aircraft launch and recover Reapers via line-of-sight data links. However, most of the Reaper's mission is carried out outside of visual range relying on satellite communication. Operators can fly simulated and real missions from the GCS, conducting surveillance, carrying out strikes, and executing recon duties. Multispectral targeting systems provide real-time video. While one crew is engaged in situational reporting, another is already planning the next mission in detail. Demonstrating the complexity and efficiency of GCS-operated Reaper operations. This simultaneous use of real and simulated data enables exceptional operational readiness and efficacy. Ground crews have critical responsibilities in the rigorous pre-flight testing of the MQ-9 Reaper. Structure specialists inspect the airframe to ensure its structural integrity.
Avionics professionals inspect control surfaces to ensure precise flight control. Meanwhile, propulsion experts examine the 950 horsepower Honeywell turboprop to ensure top performance. All while communication professionals test the satellite and line of sight links, the Reaper's lifeline during its mission. Ordnance personnel load and account for each weapon with precision. With the crew's final approval, the Reaper, a testimony to military precision and collaboration, ascends to carry out its prescribed mission. Once the aircraft is airborne and clear of the immediate area, control is effortlessly transferred to the flight crew, who may be thousands of miles away. They use satellite communications to direct the Reaper to carry out its mission objectives, such as maintaining watchful monitoring or delivering pinpoint strikes. After the operation is over, the flight team returns the drone to the launch recovery location. As it re-enters the control range, control is returned to the launch and recovery crew, who expertly manage the Reaper's descent, land it safely, and complete post-mission checks. We keep the mission control element stateside. Every other mission that is done requires somebody to be physically present in the actual battle space in order to affect change on the battlefield. Here, we can project power in a way that is unique to the platform. The future of projecting that RPA power is going to be very important to our national defense strategy going forward. UAVs have different benefits at sea supplementing naval power with extended surveillance, pinpoint strikes, and reduced personnel danger. Due to their lengthy endurance, unmanned systems such as the groundbreaking X-47B reinforce fleet defense and project power across wider distances. The X-47B was brought by barge and hoisted onto the USS Harry S. Truman in November 2012, marking a watershed milestone in maritime aviation history. This unmanned combat air system was onboarded to perform sea trials, with its activities critical in developing future maritime unmanned aerial systems. This autonomous system integration marks a substantial leap in naval warfare and vessel defense. X-47B was put through different trials, including the use of the catapult-assisted takeoff barrier arrested recovery system, also known as CATOBAR. It was intended to prove the viability of a fully autonomous, carrier-based, unmanned system. The drone's capacity to resist the severe maritime environment, integration with carrier systems, and compliance with deck handling procedures were all tested. Trials with the X-47B would lead to the MQ-25A. A 
A key milestone in naval aviation was reached during the unmanned carrier aviation demonstration held on board the USS George H.W. Bush in December 2021. The MQ-25A, the world's first operational carrier-based unmanned aircraft, would be a key component of the future family of systems air wing. Its aerial refueling capabilities extend the operational radius and increase the carrier strike group's influence. This brilliant concept incorporates an innovative control system worn on the forearms of the deck crew. These devices, known as control display units, allow for better coordination between deck crew and drone, resulting in more efficient deck handling activities. Now, for a UAV with a difference. The QF-4, a modified version of the old F-4 Phantom II, is a fascinating combination of historical heritage and current application. Designed as a two-seat, twin-engine, all-weather, supersonic jet interceptor, the F-4 Phantom operated in a variety of capacities. The QF-4 model found a new use as a full-scale aerial target for testing modern air-to-air -air weapon systems and training pilots in enemy aircraft engagement. The QF-4 could be flown with a pilot for training exercises as necessary. I'd much rather see uh, one of these F-4s go down in a blaze of glory testing the next generation of, uh, of weapons rather than just sitting out there in the desert collecting dust. It's not doing anybody any good out there. So uh, when we pull them out and recycle them, it really, uh, really benefits everyone. A typical QF-4 mission day begins at the airbase before daybreak with ground crews executing rigorous pre-flight checks on the unmanned target drone. With the reduction of QF-4 numbers, the QF-16 had to take over. QF-16s serve as realistic targets for pilot training and testing new weapon systems which is important in honing air-to-air -air combat techniques. This unmanned target can be flown with or without a pilot, but its primary purpose is unmanned. Before takeoff, a pilot constantly engages with the remote control facility while carrying out different tests on the aircraft to check whether everything is working. If the pilot is satisfied with all the pre-flight checks, he climbs out of the cockpit and locks the canopy from the outside. Later, the control is turned over to the pilot sitting in the control room. The very first QF-16 successful unmanned mission occurred in New Mexico on August 17, 2016. The same model was shot down the following year as part of a special weapons exercise. While this practice is expensive, it is the only way air and ground crews can get proper experience on what it's like to engage a real enemy aircraft. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it.
Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.